I V M. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today we have a very special guest with us. She is a medical scientist. She has studied in the world of healthcare, and you know she's doing some very interesting things, especially with regards to women's health. And I think that's what's so fascinating about the conversation that we had before this podcast, and which is why I was so excited to have her on board and share her story with us, and also what are the interesting things that she's been up to. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Malika Parekh to the Habit Coach Podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much, Ashtin. Nice to be here. First Thank podcast. you. <laughs> Thank you. This is your first podcast. I'm very excited. This is I thankful. hope you have a fantastic one. Thanks. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> so, Malika, you've done so many different things, right? Like, what was that journey like? How did you get into understanding the science behind it? What, what was it? What was that journey like? So, my background has been in healthcare. I, I've really been interested in healthcare and science from a very young age. Mm-hmm. Uh, worked in hospitals. Worked under surgeons primarily mm-hmm. for most of my life, starting in high school, and did a number of you know medical research internships at hospitals. And I studied a lot. So I wasn't sure exactly whether I wanted to practice medicine or uh, sort of deliver healthcare on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. And so I studied, I did my master's in public health Mm -hmm. and then went on to do my master's in medical science. And along the way, I did a number of different, I had a number of different work experiences. So between science work experiences in the hospital, working for surgeons or management fellowships, both in management positions within health systems in the US, or then consulting for hospitals and health systems uh, for best practices, and then for healthcare investors. So in all of these different experiences, I really sort of exposed myself to the various facets of healthcare Mm -hmm. in the US and wasn't sure whether I was going to continue studying or pursue something in business. Hmm. And then, long story short, saw a number of opportunities in India, okay. especially as it pertained to women's health, mm-hmm. healthcare delivery, and the model of healthcare delivery, you know, moving away from the traditional tertiary hospital model. Uh, and along the way, and along my research, I started to discover that in about 2012, when I really started to come to India uh, quite frequently, I started to realize what a demand there was in fitness especially for women. So people were starting to become much more aware. They were Mm -hmm. starting to become much more interested in fitness and wanted to stay fit, wanted to find things that suited their bodies. And because of this increased awareness, I knew of the Physique 57 method because Mm -hmm. I practiced it in New York and uh, was very determined to bring Physique 57 to India because of the specific benefits that I saw in my own body and in knowing what I know from a scientific perspective about a woman's body as well as an Indian woman's body. Correct. And and where did your passion for for medicine come about from? Like, how did you get so passionate about the medical field? I, so my grandmother had three children, was married to a lawyer and went back to medical school after having three children. Wow. And was a practicing physician until, you know, she left the earth. So, uh, so it started from, I mean, we have, a, we have a history of, of physicians in my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, she and I have had a very close connection. So, uh, and then my aunt, you know, took after, took after her and, uh, and I just had those influences growing up. I would visit India so often growing up. So my aunt was, is also a practicing physician. She's a pediatrician. Okay. My mother was in healthcare business. So she was an owner and operator of uh, old age homes, nursing homes oh. uh, in the U S mm-hmm. and, um, and so that was my experience from a very young age. I was volunteering with patients and, you know, uh, just, I was just involved in patient care and watch the business side of healthcare from a very early age Mm-hmm. Always intrigued by the science. Mm-hmm. I think that was just sort of what drove my interest and maintained my interest in the healthcare field. It always comes back to the science for me. So that was uh, that's sort yeah, of because saying it. I was wondering because you know you sound so passionate about it, and I was saying that this doesn't seem like just an education, right? This seems like almost like a life that you've put into it. And um, and and I'm so happy that you shared with this with me because you know. Very often, the stuff that we suddenly pick up and, and, and do has a very deep-rooted aspect in our life, like, your, like the businesses that you're starting right now. 
and uh, and it's so interesting that you you your grandmother was part of the uh, you know the doctor and healthcare and your mother was part of the business aspect of it and now you're merging the two that's right fascinating yeah thank you and um so so when you came here you realized that there was a need right you said there was a need amongst the way that uh, indian women especially were looking at fitness and the need that was there what was that gap that you saw there like what were people doing right what were people doing wrong were they damaging themselves like how was it yeah you know what what i observed and i think a lot of consumers would agree is mm. that there were many options for fitness mm. uh, coming about but none of them focused necessarily on how a woman's body is built mm. so a lot of gyms and boot camps and workout regimens that existed or that it, that still exist uh but especially when i started my research in in the field uh were primarily options that were sustainable for men mm-hmm. and were designed with you know what men's bodies can do mm-hmm. to be very honest with you women can do everything men can do i mean i'm a big believer in that in in all aspects of life but yep. there are things that the woman's body does that a men man's body cannot do Correct. And you need exercise to address those areas and those muscles. Yes. And you don't necessarily, you know, what I was finding was that there weren't forms of exercise that combined strength training and cardiovascular exercise but also addressed those female centric functions. Hmm. And in meeting and speaking to many women because my overall business objective uh is in women's health mm-hmm. uh, and in in chatting with many women everybody was itching to get fit and aspiring to stay fit and find something that they could stick with but people would start and have to stop because of injuries they would uh they would they would be too intimidated to start because the environments that they would step into were very male dominant mm-hmm. um they often you know had trainers who weren't necessarily too aware of specific functions of a woman's body. So with all of those factors, women were desperate for things that suited their bodies and that helped them stay fit, not just something they could do once in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh that wasn't hard on their bones and damaging their bones. And uh, and they didn't have too many of those options. Okay. So and and I you know, I'll get into bone density, but bone density is a is a huge uh aspect that women need to keep in mind when they're thinking about their fitness. Correct. And people were injuring themselves not knowing why they were injuring themselves and mm-hmm. unable to find something that they could stick with as a result. So this is where physique 57 really came into the picture. Super. So what were the top 3 big issues that you saw like for example one was bone density that you noticed. What are the other things that are different when it comes to um fitness amongst women as compared to men? So bone density is definitely one. I think mm-hmm. bone density is something that women need to keep in mind uh when they're pursuing their fitness regimen. Correct. Um I think another uh another thing women need to keep in mind is um sustainable fitness. Okay. okay. So just being able to do things a few times or for, you know, a short time frame. Uh let's take a challenge, you know, and 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 do a challenge for a few weeks and try mm-hmm. that for a few weeks. could not may not necessarily be something that is sustainable to them and there are many aspects of sustainable fitness it's not just the physical aspect okay so there is the physical aspect which is you need something that you can continue to do again and again and that thing needs to not injure you in order for you to do that thing again and again correct aside from that you also need to feel a sense of empowerment hmm. and the nature of working out and these group classes and 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 uh boot camps uh what what women were saying was we just feel so awful about ourselves hmm. you know exercise is not supposed to be about punishing your body it's about celebrating your body hmm. and so women weren't getting that necessarily from the different forms of fitness that were around uh at the time and i'm talking about a few years ago now i mean now there's you know lots of different respectable brands that exist that focus on this but yeah. i would say we we lead in that right we focus so much about but we focus so much on empowerment mm. and our trainers who we also dub motivators i mean we call them motivators because part of their training is the physical aspect of training and the other part of their training is 
what to say exactly. We call it physique speak. So right. exactly what you're saying to the client to motivate them and to get the best from them and to make them feel empowered, to walk away from the experience feeling empowered and not beat down, run down, punished, you know, only for them to come back for more the next day. Uh, so sustainable fitness, sustainability has a lot to do with the mental aspect, with the sense of empowerment, uh, as well as the physical aspect. So that's the second thing. And the last thing I think women really need to keep in mind is this myth mm. around low impact exercise. And this mm. goes a little bit back to the bone density point. But, you know, if you hear the word low impact, you immediately think low intensity. And that's not the case. It doesn't yeah. have to be low impact. In fact, our method has been scientifically designed to be high intensity, but low impact. Mm. You can get the cardio in, you can get the weight loss in, in a short amount of time and still be low impact and still not damage your bones. And that is a really important point, I think, that women need to become more aware of. Low impact doesn't mean low intensity. Lovely. So, so the three things, one is about bone density for sure. And do you see a difference between uh, pre-pregnancy, post-pregnancy, during pregnancy, especially with the bone density um, scenario? Yeah, so it's primarily, you know, post-pregnancy and perimenopause is Correct. really when our hormones change and our bone densities uh, can be compromised. But, you know, bone dense, what is bone density? Bone density is a measure of mineral content within a certain volume of our bone, right? Primarily calcium and phosphorus. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, and our bones are always going through a process called bone remodeling, where we're building up bone cells and we're breaking them down. Correct. Before the age of 30, 35, we're building bone much faster than we're breaking it down. After 30, 35, it's the opposite, where mm -hmm. our bones are breaking down faster than they're building up. So I think it's important to point out that um, in this process of bone remodeling, where your mm -hmm. bone is you know, continuously building cells mm -hmm. as well as breaking down cells, mm -hmm. uh, you can reverse the effects of uh, or you can slow the breakdown, I should say. So mm -hmm. after the age of 30, 35 mm -hmm. is when your bones start to break down faster than they're building up. You can actually slow the progression of that so that you maintain strong bones as you enter the next phase of life. So your question originally was about pregnancy, post-pregnancy. Women start to face um, issues with bone density, particularly around the time of menopause when estrogen levels drop. Right. And in order, it's more difficult to start to reverse the process if you start to exercise then. But if you've been exercising all along, if your body's been used to it and been doing these things through pregnancy, before pregnancy, after pregnancy, your bones are strong enough where your hormone fluctuations won't necessarily impact your bone loss as much as it would if you were not exercising. Correct. The other thing I think that is, uh, that is important to point out is there's there's different types of exercise mm. that are good for bone density. Okay. Mm. There's weight bearing exercise and then mm. strength training exercise. Mm -hmm. So weight bearing exercise simply means, you know, uh, the, the fight against gravity, what mm. are you doing against gravity? And mm. so that can be walking, running, climbing, dancing. But if you're doing super high impact exercises, mm. Mm. when you're trying to build bones or, slow your bone loss, mm -hmm. you're creating an impact on the Correct. bones mm -hmm. and you're defeating the purpose of what you're doing. You're defeating the objective of what those weight bearing exercise can actually be doing for your bones by mm -hmm. also breaking them down at the same time. Mm -hmm. So there's actually be huge benefits to, you know, correctly choreographed low impact exercise that helps you build strength and that gives you those weight bearing exercises that don't involve running, jumping, and things that are also damaging your bones at the same time. This is so fascinating because, you know, when when I typically talk to people about, you know, bone density, they keep saying, oh, that's why I'm taking my calcium supplement. Yeah. And, you know, calcium supplementation is a completely different, you know, bag of worms that we can get into. But the whole thing is that we also need our exercise in order to promote that growth. That's right. right? So there's something called stress, right? The use stress, which is stress that is good for you. And right. this kind of exercise is actually adding that use stress to it, which is the point I wanted to drill home saying exercise is very, very good from multiple reasons. It's not just weight loss as people keep thinking about it, you know, okay. especially as we grow old, bone density for sure is something that is so important that we need to keep track of and think about.
What I like to talk about, Ashdeen, is, you know, there's so much emphasis on anti-aging, right? Yes. They were all about anti-aging and what can we do to our skin and body parts and, you know, uh, all different things to, to avoid the process of aging. Yep. But if you've done all these beautiful things to your face, let's say, okay, to prevent the aging process and to defy gravity, um, but you're hunched over, mm. nobody's going to be able to see all those beautiful things that you've done. <laughs> so you have to make sure that in this whole anti-aging regimen that everybody takes part in, mm. that you're also focusing on the, the types of exercises that are going to improve your posture, okay. improve your bone density, maintain your bone density, so that you can age gracefully and avoid injury and falls and fractures and things like that. And, you know, as Indians and Indian women, we face an even higher susceptibility to, to bone density loss, Mm -hmm. um, which I can get into, but. Is it a uh, vitamin D issue? Because of melanin? Yeah. It is. I mean, there's, it's just so, so much scientific research out there on, uh, on why Indians have Mm -hmm. a lower bone density than other populations globally on our podcast you can geek out on these things okay so no issue go for it okay great but Mm. you know uh, without getting into a a total science lesson Mm. um it's you know it is it is something that we need to be aware of so we are indian and of indian descent you are likely to have a lower bone density uh than other populations globally and then if Mm. you add the female factor in there where you have hormones changing and you have um other issues that can can contribute to uh to bone loss or if Mm -hmm. you have some kind of illness and you're on medications uh that can lead to you know exacerbated and expedited bone loss Mm -hmm. um then you're really at risk when 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 you're aging uh, of things like fractures and things like worsened posture, just, you know, mm-hmm. punch back and uh, we're at risk of things like this. And so aging gracefully has a lot to do with exercise, especially in India. I mean, even Lovely. more so than other countries, which is what, again, which people don't necessarily think about. Correct. Absolutely. And so this is the physical part of it. And then you said something very interesting, which is the mental aspect of it, right? Which is understanding that, Consistency is important. And in order to have that consistency in place, you have to have the right mindset for it to continue. And this is such an important thing for people to pick up and learn about exercise because everyone thinks that either exercise is dhamal, go hard, go home, or it is, you know, punishing your body for the samosa that you ate yesterday. So, so, you know, at Physique 57, how do you go about, you know, communicating this aspect to people? What are the things that people can learn from this? So, again, I think that what our motivators or Mm. our instructors really focus on is the aspect of, okay, congratulate yourself, first of all, for showing up. Mm. Congratulate yourself for coming to class in the first place. And we layer the class so that you can push your body as hard as you can without... So you're pushing, you're, you're challenging yourself, uh, but you're not pushing beyond your limits. You have to listen to your body. The entire workout is designed for you to listen to your body, but it's also, it's low impact. You're not doing anything that is going to injure you. It feels like you can't do it. And if you mm-hmm. really can't, you'll max out and you'll stop. Okay. But for the most part, we're focusing on a combination of small and large movements, which really, uh, and, and stretching throughout, which results at the end of the workout you don't feel exhausted. You don't mm. feel spent and your recovery time is faster. So even if I am exhausted and spent today, um, I'll sleep well. I yes. won't be injured. My joints won't be injured. My bones won't be injured. And tomorrow I can get up and do it again. Mm. So the, the science behind the method has a lot to do with the sustainability factor for us. That being said, of course, it's also about empowerment. It's also about how the motivator slash instructor makes the client feel for coming into a class that day, for doing a class that day, even if it's, you know, h- however long you can make it through the workout. Yes. You showed up and you did your best and tomorrow you'll push just a little bit more. And sustainability is important for that, right? You see a difference. We say in our workout, you will see visible results within eight classes. Hmm. But between class one and two, you'll feel a difference. Between class two and three, you'll feel a difference. Even if you just do 
one more, two more reps than you did the day before, right? Yes, yes. So, and and uh, so I'll pause there, but I think that those few things really contribute to sustainability. It's difficult to stay motivated. I mean, Absolutely. especially in a time like today, everybody says, what do you do to stay motivated? That's the most common question I get. Nothing. It's so difficult to stay motivated. It's about discipline. But outside of that discipline and showing up, it's up to then our trainers to motivate you and empower you to come back, to give you a feeling of empowerment so that you feel like, okay, I just accomplished something, not, mm. oh my God, I'm dead. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Know? I'm wiped. And in fact, um, the whole habit coaching system that we created started because of that, which was my war is against motivation, right? Because I've realized the motivation gets you there, but it doesn't give you that consistency. That's right. So for consistency, you need something else. That's right. And then, and like you said, consistency is actually where the results come from. Consistency is actually where your life comes from. And it is not those few moments of intensity that you put in, but the recovery that you can put inside. Can you show up every day? And those are the aspects that we talk about, especially with, in, in habit coaching. So you're bang on. They're very happy that you brought that up because consistency is just so important. Absolutely. And so you keep talking about the Physique 57 method. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so the Physique 57 method is uh, it's based on a proprietary method, which we call interval overload, okay, where okay. you take each muscle group, and really we mean you get a full body workout head to toe, mm -hmm. take each muscle group to a point of fatigue, and then you stretch immediately for relief. Okay. Within the 57-minute workout, which is the classic length now because of you know what's going on in the world we obviously have abbreviated versions because the attention span virtually is less than 57 minutes mm -hmm. uh, but within a 57 minute workout or even a, a sprint workout or express workout as we call them uh, you you get cardio strength training and stretching all within that hour so you don't have to think about your cardio days your weightlifting days your yoga days you can, if you want, to accompany the Physique 57 method along with your yoga or along with, you know, a run once or twice a week. You can do it, but you don't need to. If you were to right. do Physique 57, three to four times a week is what we say. If you can um, mm -hmm. do that, because that's the recommended dose of exercise, mm -hmm. right, by the WHO. Uh, if you can do three to four Physique 57 workouts in a week, you have covered all your bases as far as fitness is concerned you've gotten your cardio you've gotten your strength training your strength training uh, and your stretching and uh, and because of that and because of the fact that no two workouts are ever the same so i think it's really important here to talk about our instructors mm -hmm. each of our instructors are professional dancers by training okay we only audition uh or primarily, I should say, we primarily audition dancers mm -hmm. because they have spent their entire lives and you don't get to the professional level unless you've been dancing for a very long time. They've spent their entire career focusing on the smallest shift in form and how the mm -hmm. smallest shift in form can make all, all the difference. So when it comes to fitness, alignment is and posture is so important. And because these guys are dancers, they can form correct you in a way uh, in a very trained way where many fitness instructors cannot. So I think it's really important to say that Physique 57 focuses so much on the form um, and how you do things and doing things correctly as opposed to number of reps, you know, uh, number of times a week. It's really, okay, even if you're coming to us twice a week, do it, do it as correctly as possible. Watch the trainer, focus on what he or she is saying, listen to the correction. You know, in the studio, we would say, let them hands-on correct you. Uh, that's what they're trained to do. So I think it's really important to point out the background of our trainers when talking about the method, because that's really unique in India. You don't, you know, you have the Zumbas, you have the dance-based workouts. These aren't, this is not a dance-based workout. It does incorporate music mm -hmm. and there's a scientific reason for that, but mm -hmm. It does incorporate specifically choreographed music by these professionally trained dancers to maximize results. It's so true because dancers have one of the best uh, body awareness around, right? Because they need to know where their limbs are through space and proprioception at all times. So if they can communicate that to your clients, that's the best way of getting through it. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm curious, what do you mean by the scientific approach to music? So... I don't know if you know this, but um, 
uh, humans are the only species outside of birds where our heartbeats will match the beat of the music. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when you have uh, when you have music playing in your workout, there's actually scientific benefits. You actually mm. maximize efficiency. You're able to push a little bit more okay. uh, because your mu- your um, your heart rate is matching the beat of the music. That being said, mm. we take you through 57 minutes, so we're not asking you to stay at max heart rate or close to max heart rate the entire time. Mm. We take you through a journey, and so the dancers uh, or the trainers are uh, are are trained to take you through a rise and fall of your heart rate so that you maximize results by the end of it. And they do this through music, different types of music at different times for different periods of time to really push you through the movement. Wow, I had no idea about it. So, so I, your heartbeat actually matches the music, fantastic. So now we can like do a workout at home with blasting heavy metal or some, something like that. We need to plan that out. All right. Love no, it. Not for too long. <laughs> not for too long. <laughs> not, not for too long or you'll, you'll max out quickly. <laughs> so heavy metal, classical. Heavy metal, classical. We need to like interval in our music. <laughs> something like <laughs> <Love> that. <it. laughs> Super. So um, what would a person expect in your class so I can understand the cardio aspect of it I can understand the stretching and the strength training but is there something unique about the kind of exercise that you do is it the kind of exercise that you would do in a gym like how like what is the difference so the biggest difference is that it requires little to no equipment so you you have you mostly are using your own body weight for Mm -hmm. instance Um, we have you know, in studio, we use light weights, meaning one kg to three kgs. Some, you know, some really, really strong and fit people can push it to four or five kgs, but it's no more than that because you're doing those uh, reps and mm-hmm. um, and isometric, so small movements mm-hmm. um, in combination with isotonic or big movements. And so because of because we're so focused on the sequence of movement and the application of that movement with the music, um, we have our own body weight, we have light weights, and we have the ballet bar. Hmm. So there are bar workouts, which I'm sure people okay. have, have heard of. Uh, this mm-hmm. is different than a, than a classic bar workout because bar workouts primarily focus on those isometric or small movements. Okay. And uh, in Physique 57, we really make sure that we bring in the larger movement, the isotonic movement as well. Mm-hmm. to maximize your cardiovascular benefits within the workout so that you're getting that cardio in also. Uh, so yes, it is It is primarily movement focused and you have to watch the trainer the entire time, listen to the trainer. They take you through every second mm. uh, of a choreographed journey through those 57 minutes. Okay. So you're not focused on equipment. You're not focused on um, on you know, doing things yourself, you don't really even have to think you can almost zone out and just listen to the trainer. Mm. And then, you know, in studio, we have benefits like um, we have these imported mat floors, which are specifically designed to cushion your joints. Uh, so that in addition to the fact that we're low, what we call ourselves low impact, in addition mm-hmm. to the fact that we're low impact, when we are, you know, on the ground or using our, our joints in any way, we are on a soft and cushioned uh, surface. So important, so yeah. important. And um, if you can describe the bar aspect of it to people a little bit. So what do you mean by the belly bar and what are those kind of movements? Because I don't know how many people would be aware of that. So it's a wall mounted bar or okay. a floor mounted bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have very specific, I mean, we've done a lot of research into what the height needs to be, what the distance from the wall needs to be, all of that um, mm-hmm. over the years. And we've had, you know, some of the top orthopedic surgeons in the world really uh, help us with making sure that our um, our our equipment usage is correct, as well as our, you know, anatomical mm-hmm. alignment. So, uh, but we use this bar as an apparatus. So mm-hmm. parts of the workout are done using the ballet bar for support. Mm-hmm. And beyond that, it's very difficult for me to describe <laughs> on a podcast what types of movements you do, mm-hmm. other than to say that you use that bar as a as a form of support. So if you're home mm-hmm. and you have a sturdy piece of furniture like a chair or a table, mm-hmm. you could you could use uh, a sturdy piece of furniture as well uh, as a source of support. There are a few positions which we do, which we call chair positions. Mm-hmm. There are a few positions that we do that you need a wall or floor mounted bar for. Okay. Uh, but outside of that, you can do largely do the workout from home using Lovely. a piece of furniture. 
and and these are workouts that were created by ballet dancers for ballet dancers or has nothing to do with ballet dancers or we just borrowed the bar from them so the bar method in general like any bar class bar method uh, mm. traditionally derived from a german dancer okay. by the name of lotti burke okay okay she started the lotti burke method in the 60s mm. and uh, and was primarily focused on women and mm. also focused on these isometric movements which fo- focused on female centric um muscle groups and mm. making sure that in addition to getting a workout you were really making sure you strengthened those supporting muscle groups which are super important mm. particularly to women mm. um so all of these these bar classes are derived primarily from the Lottie Burke method okay that being said over the years things have adapted and the physique 57 method adapted in a way whereby they pulled in isotonic movements so large movement mm. in addition to those isometric movements mm-hmm. uh because they needed to make sure that clients were getting a cardiovascular workout in as well mm. and uh so you're still low impact but you're getting that high intensity burn correct you're getting into your cardio zone which is you know leading you to burn calories and eventually lose weight or keep weight off if you want mm. if that's you know your desired goal mm. um, and it's fun it's 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 a lot of fun it's small movements for such a long time can be a little bit monotonous uh, mm. but a combination oh, no, but it's painful i remember it, it, it is it's, it's I remember practically crying in my first uh, bar class that i did done years but, ago but it hurts so good right <laughs> it it's hurts so a, good it hurts so good it's not a it's not a painful uh you know a detrimental situation and that's mm. that's beneficial to to everybody but it's more exciting with the with the combination of the small movement and the large movement it's it's yeah. a little more exciting so it is it is actually based on a method derived by a ballet dancer Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's nothing you don't have you don't need to have any sort of prior ballet dance experience at all to try the class to be successful at the class we should actually get a bunch of bodybuilders to do this just to show that they can make people cry because it, it's so interesting that uh, that you're using the muscle in a very different way as from a, what you would do in a gym right and you're actually using it in a way that you would uh, use it in real life right that's right and, and- That's right. And what we get from, you know, we do have athletes, cricket players, football players, American football players, um uh rugby players that mm-hmm. have tried this method and they're shocked by the flexibility and the strength of the of the woman standing next to them at the bar, okay. <laughs> but also at the muscle groups that they that they just woke up that they never, mm-hmm. you know, realized that they had or forgot about. Yeah. In their training. So we do we have a number of athletes Whoa. actually try this and 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 love it mm. because of the, that reason fascinating so um manika if you are talking to the women listening to the podcast right now right and you want to give them three uh tips on you know taking their fitness to the next level especially focusing on an aspect of their life from a fitness point of view What three tips would you give them? Something that they can action right now or from this week onwards that they should think about. So I'm going to go back to the three topics that we chatted about, but to okay. sum it up, hmm. uh, I, I have to say, you know, pay attention to your bone density hmm. and pay attention to workouts that that don't limit the building or the reversal of, uh, you know, bone loss or the or hmm. building bone density. So pay attention to your bone density when selecting a workout. That's mm. point number 1. Okay. Point number 2, pick something that makes you feel empowered. The mm. secret to finding something sustainable uh and and staying consistent with exercise is to pick something that makes you feel good and something that's fun and makes you feel empowered. Uh, yes. So that's the second thing and the last thing is you know, let's bust this myth that low impact means low intensity. Mm. If you're looking for weight loss, you don't necessarily need to break your bones in order to lose that weight. Find something that is low impact but high intensity and this is what we this is what we do. This is the science behind our method and why we do what we do. So, bust the myth, the myth that you need to be high impact in order to lose weight and see results. Super. Fantastic. Uh Malika, anything that you would like to share that I've missed? out that you want to you know communicate to everyone listening I think we've covered a lot I mean we'll probably cover more in the next one but I'm hoping <laughs> I'm not 
I'm not too redundant in the next one, but no, I don't, I think we've, you know, we've chatted about everything that is salient to particularly women's fitness and, uh, and exercise as well. So. Lovely. Fantastic. Manika, thank you so much for coming on the Habit Coach podcast. How can people get in touch with you? How can people find out more about what that you're doing? So they can come to our page on Instagram, Physique 57 India. Okay. They can visit our website, www.physique57india.com. Um, and, you know, we will have one of our client service team members reach out uh, almost immediately once once you make contact if you're interested. And we have all kinds of, you know, complimentary trials and things that people can can try before committing to the method. So I just encourage people to show up. Lovely. Excited. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. My pleasure. Take care. All right. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Ashtin Doc on Twitter and Instagram. You can find lots more information on my website, awesome180.com or check out different content on my YouTube channel called A-W-E-S-O-M-E-180. That's Awesome 180. I hope you enjoyed that show. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Another fun week in the books last week, and I think you guys should definitely check out some of the shows that we did. So first, let me tell you about Cock and Bull. We did two Cock and Bulls on Cyrus Says last week, which is I don't think we've ever done before. But there was just so much to talk about, and it was fun. Uh, the first one was just on Trish, Myself, and Cyrus. The second one, we had Abhijit Ganguly on, and that was a great episode. Do check that out. Check out Know Your Kanun as well. It's been a while since I spoke about that show, but Umber's been doing a great job on it. This week he spoke to Naina Sharma, a Canadian lawyer, about the ways that you do business in Canada and the challenges that that presents. Definitely very interesting stuff. Do check that out. The guys at non Curry are doing some really, really fun stuff. Do check out their latest episode. They talk about roti, the simple bread, but it's got some complications to it. Let them tell you about what they are. Do check that out. Also, do definitely check out the Wire Talks with Siddharth Bhatia. He's been killing it, man. It's just a new show, but what great conversations. This week, he had Siddharth Singh on to talk about pollution. Do check that out. And you know what, guys? The best news of all, Simplified, is back They've been back for a few weeks and I haven't called them out before, but remember that they're back and do check them out. This week, they talk about does censorship make sense? Knowing the guys, I think I know the answer to that, but you should go check that out. And with that, I hope to see you again next week. Entertainment is like food for the brain. It's a window to culture and a great way to understand the world around us. The internet has changed what it means to be an entertainer, creating new storytellers with millions of fans. It has spawned a new breed, the story sellers, those behind the scenes creating the business for this ecosystem. They work with brands, platforms and channels who are keen to capitalize on an audience hungrier than ever for more stories. I am Vineet Kanabar and I have a ringside view to how stories are told and sold. On my show, I bring you creators, artists, executives and marketers for a freewheeling conversation around the business of entertainment. Tune in to Storytellers and Storysellers for personal stories, analysis and criticism every Thursdays as I talk to the brightest minds telling or selling great stories today.